Sarah Marshall, um, today representing Dominion Energy and the Dominion Energy Charitable Foundation. Um, I think I'm going to provide a lot of information that will help organizations here in the room on Zoom um, because I've seen a lot of grants come from organizations that are in the room and on Zoom um, and have helped review those. Um, so first and foremost, I'm going to speak about what type of grant opportunities Dominion has, and then I'll talk more about some tips on how to um, be able to be applying for those dollars and be granted those dollars. So first and foremost, Dominion Energy Charitable Foundation is the foundation um, and philanthropic arm of Dominion Energy. That foundation is funded purely by shareholders, not by customers and it awards grants only to 501c3 organizations. We do have a second piece, which is from Dominion Energy Corporation as a whole. That organization will provide funding to 501c3 organizations as well as organizations such as a chamber that's a 501c6 for sponsorships um, for events such as this. So we do have those two pieces. Um, the majority of our dollars awarded come from our foundation. Um, last year, our foundation gave out about $58 million. Um, I will say that is not just in Virginia. That is across 16 different states. So get excited, but not too excited. Um, and most of our grants, that sounds like a lot of money. Most of our grants are between $1,000 and $15,000. And at a local level, the majority of grants are gonna be $5,000 and less. So we do try to make those dollars go as far as we can and impact the most people that we can. We do, it, it gets a little confusing as far as grants, but um, from being on the other side, working in the nonprofit world, um, I'll say once you figure it out, our grant system is pretty consistent and it gets easier and easier and easier. Um, first and foremost, to help um, relieve any concerns about timing, our grant cycle is open year round. It is not, you have to apply by a certain date and you hear by a certain date, we take rolling applications. Um, with that, I will say we also fund our, our applications on a rolling basis. So. If you're looking to apply kind of October, November, December, most likely we're going to tell you, is it okay if we roll that application into the next year? Um, because though we give out a lot, we get even more applications in. Um, so our basic grants apply anytime we fund on a rolling basis. We do try to focus on four groups, which sounds kind of scary, but they're really very broad. One is health and human services. That's gonna include your, your food banks, your Habitat for Humanity, your healthcare organizations, those organizations that are helping put food on the table, helping keeping people in homes, helping people get the medical support they need, including mental health support. We also strive to help with education and environment. Um, we wanna make sure that we're helping people get out in the environment and create a more sustainable environment. We look at um, community vitality. What, are, what is going on to help make the community we live in a better place? And that's something where the Louisa Ford Foundation fits in, and that's kind of more of that broad reaching spectrum. Can you fit into, are you making the community better? And if so, you kind of fit into that bucket. Um, and then I mentioned it before with the environmental piece, but education. What are you helping educate people so that they can also have a better life, whether it's students or adults? Um, so really, it's very broad reaching. You can kind of fit really anything into those categories, um, but that is what we really focus on. We do, um, and this is where it gets, like I said, a little confusing. We have those year-round grants. However, throughout the year, we do have three grant initiative programs, and those do have a deadline for application, a deadline for funding, and that those grants, grant initiatives are voted on by the Foundation Board of Directors each year and are typically awarded a million dollars total or $5 million total, depending on what the board um, decides. Historically, our grants have always been critical community needs, so really focusing again on getting food on the table, keeping people in their homes, 
and making sure they have access to public safety or um, mental health prescriptions, that sort of thing, keeping people healthy and safe. We've also historically done environmental education grants, and that's where we partner with private and public schools to provide funding for projects that get students outdoors into, the, into nature, working on stuff such as pollinator habitats or um, looking at hydroponics, those sorts of programs with the school systems. And then the third one varies depending on the year. Um, in some years we focused on veterans groups, some years we focused on public safety. This year it is um, our social justice initiative and that's focusing on supporting organizations and programs that are working to fight systematic racism in our schools, communities, and elsewhere. So that's what we have for this year. Each year they can change, but typically those critical community needs and environmental education grants have been pretty steadfast each year. And like I said, those, they are announced on our website and they do have deadlines. The grant awards are typically a little bit more. The average grant um, awarded for those initiatives is gonna be between 15 and 25,000 typically. So I know one of the questions y'all prob probably want to know is, how do we apply and what are you looking for? Um, as someone on, that's been on the other side and continues to help organizations write grants, um, I will tell you, I think from a corporation standpoint, we do have a pretty simple system, um, though it is all on the computer. Um, and I say we have a pretty simple system because if you've ever tried to apply for a grant through Dick's Sporting Goods, um, I'll, I said, I'll never do that again. That it takes hours and is pages long. Um, for us, we really want to know, of course, the tax information. We need to know the budget that those documents that you have to report. We still need those to make sure that it is a sound organization, that you're a just organization, that you've got that information available. From there, we want to know who you are, what, why you need the money, how much money you need, and who it's going to impact. And that can be a paragraph or it can be five paragraphs, whatever it takes for you to tell that story. So we want to know, we'll use Habitat for Humanity as an example. We want to know how many homes you're wanting to build and how many people you have impacted and how many people you will impact, what funding you need for that. Um, for Dominion, we always say apply for what you need and we'll do the best we can. That may mean that we will fund at the amount you request, but sometimes we may come back to you and say, we can't fund at 25,000, but would 10,000 work? Would that still be a support? Um, and so we do try to work with these organizations and try to at least help as much as possible. Um, we wanna make sure there are a few limitations we do have. One, um, which I know we see a lot, especially in our critical community need grants, a lot of people will apply for electric utility assistance. That is something the Dominion Foundation cannot support. And the reason is, is because some of your um, constituents that you're helping may be Dominion customers and our philanthropic arm cannot go to pay for bills to our corporation. So. Um, to help make sure that we're on the safe end of that, to make sure organizations are on the safe end of that, we do not fund electric utility assistance um, to help make sure there's never any issue with that. We also want to make sure we are a program focused foundation, so we want to make sure that we are funding programs. When you apply, we prefer to do those programs that are directly impacting people not necessarily a complete capital campaign. With that being said, to Billy Wason's point, we understand that you do have to have staff, you have to have equipment to run these programs. And so we do look and we will support overhead, but we're not going to typically support just applying for a grant to support a salary. We can have that salary or that equipment be a part of the program as a percentage, and part of that is one, because we want to make sure the full impact is going forward and that there's sustainability. And two, there is a lot of risk associated for nonprofits for applying for grants just for salary, because what if you don't get that grant next year? Then that salary could potentially go away. So we look at 
doing the program, including that overhead in that, but not just funding a salary, not just funding a building, but wrapping that all up together. Um, so I'll kind of stop there and answer any questions you may have. I know I kind of went through that quick, but trying to catch up one time a little bit for Tracy here. Um, so I'll open the floor to any questions. So the easiest way, because we have changed our website around a little bit, is go to dominionenergy.com and in the search bar type foundation. That's, I will say that's what I have found is much easier to do than going through the different tabs to find us. Just dominionenergy.com, search foundation in the search bar. Yep, it, it depends on what time of year, but I would say on average it takes about two months. If we do need longer time, we'll typically reach out to the organization and say, you know, we would like a little bit more time. Or if it's, um, let's say you're the um, Louisa County Sheriff's Office Foundation and you submit a grant and we know that the critical community grants are coming up and there might be a chance for more money will reach out and say, can you wait until this time? We'd like to put you in this bucket for this critical community needs grant, or are you on a tighter timeline? And we'll work with the organizations. We also look at, on our application, it'll ask, when is the funding needed by, or when does your program cycle end? And we'll make sure that we try to stick with that time frame as well. We run five major programs, but really two that we mm -hmm. get grants for. Is it better to um, combine those needs together or to request funds separately? I would say it would depend on what your organization needs are and how you budget for that. If you keep them as total separate, it would probably be easier for you all to apply separately. Um, but if you have them kind of combined budgetary, then it might be easier to do it together. From a Dominion standpoint, um, it, it doesn't matter either way. Okay. All right. They're very separate. One is for housing repairs and one is for handicap access grants. Yep. Different programs. Okay. Yeah. I then I would do it. I would do it separately it then. Yeah. No, we have organizations that all submit three, four, five different. And then a lot of times what we'll do is if it gets down to that, we'll reach out to the organization and say, okay, which one do you need the most right now? Because we can only fund one or two. If that's the case, we'll communicate that. I would say get creative. Everything can be a program and it's all in the way you word it. If it's um, that you need a, let's say the sheriff's office needs new equipment to do training for their sheriff's officers, then that's something that's still a program. You're supporting that need. A program can be helping the community. It doesn't have to be named the nonprofit summit. It can be we're trying to help nonprofits and this is what we're applying for. So I would say get creative in how you word the grant. Yeah. And you're with the community uh, emergency fund, right? We use a community yes. emergency yep. fund. So as an example, you know about that organization, yep. right? Yes. So an example might be, I mean, let's just say that a major storm came through mm -hmm. and people are struggling because damage or yep. something, you know, you could put forth, correct me if I'm wrong, but yes. we need damage relief funds yes. yep. to assist, right? Yeah. So, so the services that you're providing, you can kind of make the program yep. pitch for. Does that and make it, sense? And I'll clarify a little bit. It can be programs less project, I would say. So to your point, yes, it can be we're applying for X amount of dollars to help those who have been impacted by Hurricane Sam. Anyone got a question? Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you all. Thank you.